Hi everyone and welcome back to the Gorilla Trading Channel. Today we are going to be doing an episode based on how to become a successful trader. But before we get into that, make sure that you are liking the video, subscribing and turning on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the upcoming content. So why is it that you got into trading? Was it that you wanted to get out the rat race, the nine to five? Was it that you wanted financial freedom? Or was it that you wanted to travel the world? There are many things that each and every one of us want to do. And it's very vital that you have a why, because by having the why will keep you motivated. So why is it that you are looking to get into trading? Most people, when they first come into trading, they're looking at the monetary side. I don't have to admit, myself included, that I saw people that were very successful as traders and they were making lots of money. You like the big mansion, the nice cars. But again, some of you may have different reasons. You may not like your nine to five. You may want to, of course, spend more time with your family. We have to understand that it gives you the freedom of time. So it's not just about the financial side. Sometimes it's also about the freedom of time. Sometimes it's about you traveling the world. Some of you might want that laptop lifestyle where you want to travel from country to country and be able to do something that's giving you an income while you're doing that, which trading can do. And I'm sure many of you have your whys. And most important thing is to make sure when you have your why, you have that at key focus when you are going through your trading. Because you have to understand, as a trader, you're going to have different psychological barriers. You're going to have different times where you're going to have limited beliefs and you're going to get hard times. So having a why is very, very important for you to keep motivated through some of those tough times so that you can overcome those barriers and become that trader that you want to become. Also, to be a successful trader, you can't just focus on the charts. You have to understand that you have to be around like-minded individuals. Most people know as a trader, it's a very lonely business. Now, you have to understand that outside of trading, most people, family, friends, loved ones, people from work are normally going to give you negative feedback. You normally get this because maybe they've done it before and they haven't been successful, or maybe they've been scammed. Maybe they've gone to a signal service and they found that they've lost their money. So understanding that you normally get negative feedback back from people that are not within the trading space. So it's very important that you associate with people within the trading space that will help you massively with your psychology and your mindset, which is very vital to be a successful trader. Also to be a successful trader, you have to change your mindset. You have to change the way that you're thinking and actually become an active learner. It's very important that you really have that self-development because as a trader, it's always you versus you. And what you need to do is you have to develop yourself. So what I'm going to do next, Next is I'm going to show you some of the books that I'm reading that is helping me to self-develop. So the books that I want to recommend is Trading in the Zone is the number one book that I like to read. Again, it talks a lot about probability and how you should be looking at the market. I also like with winning in mind, it's very important. It again goes over the sort of psychological side and the mindset of how you should be as a trader. It talks about someone doing their shooting as a professional Olympian. Again, we can really reflect and learn about how these people deal with their mindset that can help us to do the same as a trader. Another book also is The Chimp Paradox. It's another very good book on psychology and it talks about the subconscious mind. So what they do is they call the subconscious the chimp. So again, understanding that it's the psychological side, that the emotions, when you look at your subconscious, it's where your emotions come from. And as a trader, what we want to do is we want to try and eliminate the emotion. Another great book that I really enjoyed reading is How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a really good book and really talks about how to deal in social situations with different people. But for me, I found it mind blowing. It was one of my favorite books and I read that at least once a year. Now, again, understanding that what I like to do is I like to read every single day and I at least read 20 pages, which I feel is very important because it's that self-development. It's you really improving and going over sort of mindset and psychology, which is very important as a trader. We also have to understand that as a trader, we have to do self-development. It's all about us learning. And by us doing that, we can compound our learning. A lot of people talk about compounding money, compounding growth. But again, we can also use that in an aspect of our learning. We can compound by doing a little bit each day. But by doing that little bit each day, what are you doing? You're building up to that exponential growth. And that's what I found with my self-development. I found as a trader, it's 
very key part of your learning is really developing yourself and becoming that better trader by looking and digging deep into yourself by using books, by using other tools that can help you to really clear your mindset and help you to have that focus on what it is that you wanna achieve that day. And this is why it's so important that you have to have a routine. A routine is very, very important because it gives you that structure. It allows you to actually do everything that you want to do in that day and it's vital. Now, I once heard a story which I thought was absolutely amazing and I wanna share that with you today. Now, what I heard is that they interviewed Michael Johnson who was a sprinter and what they did with him and they asked him if he had any goals. And he said to him, yes, I always have goals. It's very important. Then they asked him to explain why. Why is it so important? And he said to him, if I go into a supermarket and I've written down 10 things that I want from that supermarket, I will go in there, I'll pick up what it is that I want, and I will come out of there and I will spend half the time. He said, the problem is, if I go in there without a list, I'm going to go around, I'm going to spend double the amount of time, I'm going to pick up things I don't need, and I'm also gonna forget things that I do need. I'm also gonna leave, and then I'm not gonna really achieve what it is that I went in there to get in the first place. So again, it's the same with goals, right? Once you have goals and you have them written down, you have actionable steps on how to achieve them, it's very important that you have them and it keeps you focused and aligned with what it is you wanna achieve. And if you haven't seen it already, make sure you go back and watch my previous video, A Day in the Life, where I talk about my routine and show you exactly what it is that I do in that day to help me to have a successful day. Also to be a successful trader, you have to understand 90% of trading is psychology. So it's all about having that robust mindset. So most people, they naturally will think that they need to win more than they can lose. But it's not about that as a trader. We think about probability, we look at probability, and we look at the large sample size. So make sure that when you are trading, when you take a few losses and you're in a strategy, you understand that it is just part of the probability. It's not about becoming emotional, which is what most people do. They start becoming emotional when they take losses, and what do they do? They start revenge trading, they start self-sabotaging, and they start causing more problems to themselves. So one of the key things you want to do is to make sure that you have that robust mindset and making sure that you understand that psychology is a key part to trading. So a lot of you may be asking, what is it that I can expect in the first year of trading? Well, you have to understand it's about setting expectations. A lot of people, what they don't realize is trading is a business. Trading is a profession. And like any other profession, you think about being a doctor, an engineer, even if you want to be a professional athlete, it's not gonna come overnight. It takes time for you to acquire that skill. A lot of people see in social media that you can basically learn to trade within a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and it's just not true. I will always be 100% transparent with you and tell you that it takes sacrifice, it takes time, it takes effort. Because again, most of you may wanna be down the pub, some of you may wanna to go to a restaurant, some of you may wanna to go to the gym, but again, you have to give time to educate yourself through that self-development. And understanding that trading is one of the hardest businesses out there because a lot of it is based on psychology. A lot of it is on self-development and a lot of people are not willing to take the time to develop themselves. Now, I'm sure a lot of you like myself, what you did is you went to get that education you're trying to find out how to trade. You're going from YouTube video to YouTube video. You're going from strategy to strategy. And what you tend to find is you're very confused. You're not really sure what to do and what to follow because you're not really sure what works. Now, what I would highly suggest is making sure that you get a good education, making sure that you've got a mentor that has a proven track record and that their members are also showing consistency. Because if you're seeing consistency between their students, it means that what they are teaching is viable and for you to be able to follow and to see that consistency also. Now again, it's very vital that once you do find that strategy, you understand that you have the right expectations. I keep talking about expectations because it's very vital as humans. We expect a lot and we don't want to give much for, for that expectation. We want to give little and not re and receive a lot, right? But when it comes to trading, we have to turn that around. We have to make sure that we are giving 110%. Now we talk about backtesting, backtesting, backtesting in the gorilla community because it's so vital for your education. Now what we want you to do is we want you to backtest the strategy so that you understand the strategy, you're confident with the strategy, and that you can prove to yourself that the strategy works. We then ask you, of course, to continue to backtest because this is gonna help your psychological this is going to help you to really understand that when you do face losses, 
that it's part of the game. Because again, as I spoke about before, when people take losses, they get emotional. And when they get emotional, they're likely to make mistakes, they're likely to self-sabotage, or they're likely to trade and deviate from the strategy. So by you continuing to doing the backtesting, gaining that confidence is gonna allow you to eliminate those emotions and allow you to trade confidently and consistently. Another key reason to really getting good education and learning from someone that is a professional is that you don't over leverage, you don't over risk. Like myself, I've blown loads of accounts because when I first started trading, I was risking 5%, I was risking 10%. And what you tend to find is that you take too many losses and you blow that account. Now I'm sure many of you have had this experience. So what you have to do is understanding that we have great risk management by using minimal risk, maximum reward. That's exactly what we do at Guerrilla Trading. We basically teach you how to have a maximum of 1% per trade, but majority of those trades are significantly reduced with the way that we manage our trades. We also understand that when we are taking profits, we scale in, which means that we double our profits every time that we, of course, get into the market, but we do so with minimal risk. So it's understanding that when you actually understand how to trade and to do so professionally, it allows you not to have that risk on your account. As I said, many times when you have a hundred percent in your account you understand that you can take a maximum of a hundred losses in a row but actually it's far greater than that when you use compounding it's actually 500 losses in a row and understanding with that that you could never lose your account when you're trading with that sort of money management it will give you massive confidence and allow you to continue trading without that sort of hesitation without that sort of emotion and allow you to keep following your plan which will allow you then to be consistent and for myself when i first started trading again there wasn't much about strategy there wasn't much about risk management i tried to do it all on my own and i I found it very difficult. As I've said before in previous videos, I've said about my mate who made 20,000 pound in a week and then of course, after a while, he blew that account. Now again, I fell down that same trap. I'm sure many of you have also done the same thing where you're over leveraging, you're over risking and what happens is you tend to blow that account. So it's all about learning from that. And I'm trying to, of course, give you my experiences that I've faced so you don't go down that same road. So again, having that great risk management, understanding that 1% rule that you never risk more than 1% per trade is really gonna help you to progress. And most people, they overestimate how much money that they can make from the market. They don't actually look at it as a skill, which is what it is, right? And as you know, with any skill, it takes time to acquire. But what most people do is they have these expectations that, hold on, I'm gonna have 100 pound in my account and I'm gonna make a million quid in a year. It's an unrealistic expectation. And as I said, I would always give you 100% transparency and tell you that that's not gonna happen. But what you can do is you can become the asset. You can work hard at that skill. You can compound your account by using the compounding interest, by doing the right risk management and really see that exponential growth, but do so in the safest possible way with minimal risk, maximum reward. Another thing is creating good habits and routine. Understanding that as humans, we have to have a good routine. We have to have a good structure. Think about it when you was at school. When you're at school, you go to school, you have lunch, you come home. When you go to work, you go to work, you clock in, you have lunch, you go home. So again, your day is very structured. And normally when you go to work, your manager will tell you what you have to do. So it's very simple, very easy. But as a trader, we don't have that structure. We don't have that routine. You go into the office, you do your trade, and what you tend to find is most of us, we actually just slack off. We don't actually do any of that work because we don't have that structure. So what you have to do as a trader is to make sure that you develop a structure, create processes which allows you to continue to trade and to follow your goals and your processes, which allows you to be that consistently profitable trader that you're looking to do. But understanding to get that routine, you have to do so by doing it often by creating good habits. Again, habits are very hard to achieve because you have to do them repetitively before you actually become a habit. So make sure that you are doing something, make sure you're creating that solid routine, which would allow you to create the processes, which will give you that structure, which will allow you to be able to trade consistently. Have a look at that in one of my previous videos that I released, which shows you my routine and how I personally structure my day. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, leave any comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I'm Joshua Bunker and I cannot wait to see you in the next episode.